In this video, you will learn how to improve your squat. And I will specifically address butt wink, a common movement pattern seen in a squat. And I will also explain what it is, what causes it, and how to change it. If you haven't watched my previous video, and be sure to watch it at the link below. If you want to learn how to retrain your body and then movement safely and then effectively and then move better, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. I am Taro Iwamoto. I am a Feldenkrais practitioner with my background in athletic training, physical therapy, martial arts, and the Feldenkrais method. I have helped many people like you overcome and then move beyond the pain and the limitations. Now it's your turn and let's dive in. So what is a butt wink? When you squat, when you go down, watch my pelvis. At the very end, can you see how my pelvis rotated backwards and it is the posterior pelvic tilt. And so it's the posterior pelvic tilt that happens at the very end of the squat descending and this is called butt wink. And don't ask me why it's called a butt wink. Now this is what it's called. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so what causes it? It is very common uh, compensation and due to the lack of deep hip flexion. Because when you squat down, and this is the hip flexion motion, then if you don't really have a good hip mobility, then moving down into here, and soon you, uh, the hip flexion it becomes a difficult. And if you don't have enough hip flexions, and then the body will compensate and uh, will find another place to move. And oftentimes it moves upward, and and going to the pelvis and the spine. So it has to, the pelvis has to rotate backwards to allow the spine to roll, rotate or the round and, and the flex. And so this is what happens like that, right? And is this a problem? And well, not necessarily, you can squat down, you can see the people squatting down, some people, I mean, everybody squats very differently, body type and uh, the structure is very different from a person to person. So you see some people squat with a very uh, straight back and other people squat more with the round back. And this in itself is not a problem, but of course, if you're doing uh, heavy lifting and uh, picking up something very heavy, and this could be, if you, especially if you're doing it repetitively, this could be, uh, it could be a challenge because uh, it increases the stress to the back. So you have to be mindful of the position of the pelvis and the spine as you are doing a repetitive heavy lifting, right? But as you're just doing casually doing the squats, resting or doing something, and um, here you may not really have to pay too much attention. As long as you're comfortable, that's probably okay. And uh, if it hasn't bothered you, then no, don't, don't bother. Just leave it as it is, that's fine. But if you are doing due to occupation or just doing uh, the heavy lifting as a workout and squats, then you want to be mindful of the position of your pelvis and the spine. So now let's talk about how to fix <laughs> the butt wink and improve it, improve the squat pattern. And the easiest way to do that is, my opinion, in you start on your hands and knees positions. So on your hands and knees positions, right? And the uh, knees hip width apart and the hands shoulder width apart in 90-90 positions so that uh, wrists your hands underneath your shoulders, directly underneath your shoulders, and your knees directly underneath your hips. So this is a starting position. And from here, all you're going to practice is just a rocking back and rocking forward. That's it, really simple movement. Going back and going forward. And that is not a problem, All right? So if you do have a butt wink when you do the squats, and your habitual movement pattern during the squat going down is that, well, I'm just guessing, 
you're going to be doing a posterior pelvic tilt and then increasing a little bit of flexion in your back. So this is the same movement pattern as the squatting down, right? So even though you are in a different positions, you still, this is the pattern specific exercise. You're doing the same movement pattern basically in a different position, in a different orientation, but it's the same thing. So I bet if you do that butt wink and you're doing the normal squats, that same pattern is gonna show up when you do this movement. But it's a lot easier to focus and then improve it in these positions because you don't, you're not standing against, uh, you know, so not as much the weight bearing. And uh, so you can really improve the patterns of the movement. The way to do that is as you're going down, going back, I should say, and first go with the butt wink, your own habitual patterns, which is allowing your pelvis to round and rotate posteriorly or backwards. And you can even exaggerate it. The reason why I'm having you do that pattern that you're going to change is because by even exaggerating your pattern, your own pattern, and then you can really feel that your own habitual movement pattern, that's the butt wink patterns. And then once that becomes more clear and it's easy to change it because habitual movement pattern means that you're doing something automatically without your conscious awareness. So therefore it's really hard to feel it. And the way to make it more obvious is to increase it and make it more obvious so you can feel it. You can really round your back and do that. And that shouldn't be too hard if this is your own habitual patterns. You can move into these directions relatively easily. There. And now moving on to the harder pattern, which is the opposite patterns, right? So as you're doing the same movements, you're going moving hips back you're going to rotate your pelvis forward anteriorly, which is going to move your spine slightly into the next tension. But it gets harder as you move your hips back towards the heels. So go slowly because that transition as you get closer to the heels, and you can start to feel that pelvis is going to want to go backwards. You gotta go slow. and then coming out. So this is how slowly you should be practicing. Because you do this speed, your normal movement speed, and very easy to reinforce that same habitual patterns. Therefore, without even noticing, you're going back to the posterior pelvic tilt. So go slowly and you can feel it. And then when you do that, opposite movements, anterior pelvic tilt as you're going back, it should feel very difficult and it should feel very strange because that's not the habitual movement pattern for you. So if it feels strange, if it feels wrong, you must be doing right. <laughs> it kind of sounds funny, right? If it feels wrong, then you're probably doing right. And if it feels right, then you're probably doing wrong <laughs> in this context. That and uh, so in this pattern, it really creates the um, deep hip flexions that you don't normally use. That's why it feels um, a different sensation around your hips and deep in the hip joints. And you can feel that that's what you're looking for when you do the squats, especially when you are lifting something heavy or not even heavy things, but repetitive lifting. You want, you want to be mindful of these patterns and when you go down and then transition out from a squat to the standing, pay attention how the pelvis moves so that you can start to incorporate that squatting down with moving the pelvis into the anterior pelvic tilt directions. Let me know in the comment if this was helpful for you and any questions, leave them in the comment also. If you want to improve your back pain, be sure to grab your free movement guide to pain-free back at the link below. Check out these videos and if you like this video and hit that like button and be sure to subscribe and share with your friends, 
comment below how helpful you found this video was. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Happy mindful movement. Bye bye.